Good morning. Today is July 25th. I have just a few days left in Camp NaNoWriMo. This vlog is probably going to go beyond that. Um, but this is part two of the NaNo vlog that I posted a couple weeks ago. So today is Thursday and I have a couple things to get done. I had some admin that I did this morning already. <laughs> um, and then I am meeting up with a friend, Joe. Um, we're just gonna swap a couple items real fast. And then most of today is going to be dedicated to edits. Um, and it's actually been like four days, I think, since I wrapped up the last vlog, just because um, I've mostly been working on promotion and admin stuff. I haven't been doing any kind of writing or editing or anything like that. And <clears throat> not that I'm sure that's not interesting to you guys. Um, however, I apologize. I have really bad morning voice right now. <clears throat> moment I am desperately trying to get some sales in before the end of the month just because we need to pay rent and as things stand right now we can't do that so I've been trying to add more things to the shop update and yes I know the shop update is scheduled for the 30th even though our rent is due on the 31st, technically, or on the 1st. Um, we are lucky in that we have a little bit of a grace period where we can still pay rent without a late fee, and that goes until August 5th. So I'm hoping that by giving it a kind of limited timeline that it's going to help things sell faster. Sorry, distractions. So, I also have some clips I want to film today, which is why I am putting on the makeup. Um, and actually, my mirror is sitting on top of the box of my most used makeup right now, but it's at a really good height, so I'm not going to mess with it. I'm just going to go in and use my second tier makeup. This is mostly like neutrals. It's stuff that I typically wear to the office. The stuff in the box is the stuff that I wear in my free time that is a little bit more coffee and fun. Anyway, so the plan is today I need to run out and meet Joe and then I need to do editing. I've also been working on um, uploading my backlist to Ingram Spark because I just recently found out that, there we go, this is a much better brush. I just recently found out that they did away with their setup and editing fees for the first 60 days that your book is on their site, which is good because previously, every time I had to make an adjustment, whether it was because it wasn't meeting their criteria for whatever reason or something along those lines. They charged you $60 to upload and then another $40 for every change that you made. And considering I can't pay rent right now, that is prohibitively expensive. So um, I'm working on uploading that and that will give me expanded distribution. You should be able to find my books on places like Barnes and Noble, um, and other websites. Right now, um, I'm just on Amazon and then my own shop fronts, so like Kofi and Gumroad. And I do want to say thank you to everyone who has made a Kofi contribution or purchase in the last couple of days because that really does help. Um, the other reason that I didn't film for a few days is because 
basically I got paid, realized what the gap was in between unemployment and what my bills were and my mental health just tanked. I was already having a really bad day. I got a job rejection for a place that I used to work where I had a really good rapport with everyone um, and they decided they weren't even gonna interview me. Um, and I was fighting with like the bank, um, my health insurance, my doctor's office, the DMV and it just, it was a really, really bad day. And all of this happened before 11 a.m. And if you don't know, I have a senior cop, a senior cat, a senior gato, uh, Hermes. He had just turned 17 last week, or not even last week, like Sunday. Um, and he's very sweet. I've had him since he was six months old. He is the cat of my heart and I'm very bonded to him. However, um, he is a senior cat and he has problems and he likes to make them worse. <laughs> so he's been driving me nuts for about a year because he just suddenly decided that um, litter boxes are for chumps and he's going to use the kitchen counter. This light is really annoying. Um, so yeah, that has been not great. And he peed on the counter three times the other day before noon. And it just, it was a lot my mental health tanked. I took the day off from life because sometimes it's what you have to do. And now I'm trying to get back to it and I'm trying to not give up because if I give up, then we end up homeless. So yay. Anyway, um, so I'm just putting on some basic makeup here so that I can film later because I have several pieces that I want to do. And then I'm going to work on the final, final edits for Sunflower Hollow. I want to try and send out a couple queries, but that might get pushed back until tomorrow, just depending on how long today takes me. Um, I also have been thinking recently about one of the books from my archive. Um, so several weeks ago, I did an episode where I talked about the books that I want to write one day and the books that I have started but have not finished. And one of the ones on that list, it's called Gothic Ladies Literary Society. So Gothic Ladies is like an alternate timeline with magic and it's kind of a horror story. I don't want to go into too many of the details here, but uh, it's one that I wrote several years ago before I even moved out to Washington and I think that it's a good book. However, it's very hard to market. And for that reason, it has not gotten an agent. So I've had some ideas recently. And I would like to implement those. So that is going to be the next book that I'm working on. So I'm not sure if Gothic Ladies is a book that I want to query or if it's one that I want to go directly into self-publishing. If I decide to go the self-publishing route, then it will come out no sooner than fall of next year's 2025. It might even get pushed back to fall of 2026. And if you're unfamiliar with my release schedule, I write under two different pen names, uh, Sophia Beaumont and Sheen Peril. And Sophia Beaumont is generally a little bit lighter, a little bit more contemporary, a little bit more humorous. Don't get me wrong, the books are dark. The fairy, or not the fairy men, Spider's Web deals a lot with mental health. For that matter, the fairy men does too, because there are two books in the same series. Um, Spider's Web is the first one. And 
So I normally do my darker release in the fall, usually September, October. So that's the Sheen Apparel book. And the Sheen Apparel books are usually much darker. They are usually historical. They're always historical, actually. Um, and they just have a lot more horror elements. They're not just dark fantasy. They edge into horror. Um, so this would definitely be a fall release, but it might not be 2025. It might be 2026. There's no way I'm going to have anything done for fall of this year. Um, I was so sick earlier in the year that I just have not had time to work on anything. I wanted to have Sunflower Hollow done with edits in May. And obviously that did not happen. We're now at the end of July and I've still got one more round of edits. I'll bet a light one. So yeah, this year has not gone to plan at all. And to be quite honest, 2024 has kind of kicked my ass. Um, and I will not be sorry to see it go. But that's kind of been the situation for the last couple of years because of my health. So that is the plan for today. Um, there's something else I wanted to get done and now I don't remember what it was. But obviously it's not super important at the moment. I will update you later. Um, first, I want to do a quick check-in. I was going to do a quick book check-in and I think that's going to go into this vlog. So since I last updated you on my TBR, which is still kind of out of control, I have finished a couple of things. Um, I am currently still reading, actually I hadn't started it yet when I spoke to you last. I am currently reading The Butchering Art by Kate Lister. Is it Kate Lister? I'm sorry, I keep getting these two scholars confused. But, sorry, Lindsay Fitzharris. I keep getting her and Kate Lister mixed up because I followed them both on Twitter before Twitter imploded. Um, and they both write Victorian historical nonfiction. They're both great resources. I highly suggest following them or reading any of their work if you can. Um, I'm just really bad with names. So I've been reading this and I'm I'm up to page 71. So I'm not as far in this as I would like to be. However, um, this may come as a shock considering what I write, but I'm really squeamish. And I find medical history fascinating. And it's not that this is necessarily a gory book. It's very clinical in the way the surgical descriptions are presented. Uh, however, it still hits the squick buttons for me and it's really hard to read sometimes. And especially because a lot of the times that I have to read or when I'm sitting down to eat, I don't recommend this while you're eating. Like some of the chapters are fine. Others, not so much. So, um, it's really good, it's fascinating, but it's hard for me to read more than like a chapter in one sitting. Um, I also have made progress on my ebook, which is The Dark Days Club. And I am up to, I think 60-ish percent on that. And this is the first book in a series. I, okay, yeah, I'm up to exactly 60% on this. And this is by, of course, you, Alison Goodman. Okay. Um, so I am enjoying it, but my problem is that the main character isn't really doing much. She's observing a lot. She is learning a lot about this new world that she has been drawn into, but she doesn't have a lot of agency. Um, and that's a term that gets thrown around a lot in publishing circles. Your character doesn't have any agency. 
So your character isn't making decisions for themselves. They are not taking action to further the plot. And she keeps saying that, you know, she disagrees with the person who has brought her into this world, but she's not doing anything to stand against him. She's not fighting back. And she keeps saying that she disagrees with her aunt who is trying to control her life and marry her off. But she's not doing anything about that either. She's just being led around like a puppet. And I keep waiting for her to crack and like do something totally out of the blue. And she's not doing it. And we're 60% of the way in. So, so far she has been all talk and no action. So unless something changes a lot in the next 40% of the book, I don't think I'll be continuing with the series. I think that it would be so interesting and so good. It had a lot of promise, but it's just not living up to my mental expectation. Um, <clears throat> I also finished a book. I was listening to The Splendid and the Vile by Eric Larson on audio, and it was really good. My biggest problem with Eric Larson books is that they frequently, um, I feel like the description doesn't match what is in the actual book. So for example, Devil in the White City, it's supposed to be about H.H. H. Holmes, and it felt like two thirds of that book was just about Chicago architecture. And it wasn't even necessarily the architecture of the World's Fair, which had a big play on the story. That was where he, a big part of his hunting grounds came from. But it was just like, why are we talking about architects and architecture when we're reading this because it's about a serial killer? And then in this one, it's about Winston Churchill. It's supposed to be about Winston Churchill's family and the war and how they were handling things. Um, but honestly, it is primarily a, just like your standard Winston Churchill biography. Um, it did include some things that I hadn't heard before, like more personal details about him, like his relationship with his cat Nelson, which is adorable. He stole that cat. <laughs> Um, and regardless of your feelings about like historical leaders and everything and him in particular, I feel like he was a great wartime leader, very bad peacetime leader, very bad. Um, so I thought that was really interesting. I learned a lot from that book, but then at the end, it comes out that the real hero of the story kind of is his daughter, Mary. And you don't find out anything about her except for a couple of paragraphs in the epilogue. Like, by the way, after the war ended, she went on to be a total badass. But it barely mentions any of it. So now I need to find a biography of Mary Churchill. Um, but it was good. It just, there's always a disconnect for me with Eric Larson books. I think he's a fabulous researcher and I'm always interested in the subjects that he's writing about. It's just there's usually some kind of a disconnect in there. Um, and then after I finished that, I started another book on audio, which is Code Girls. And if you're familiar with Bletchley Park in England, during World War II, they were a group of women code breakers. And this is about their American counterparts in Washington, D.C. Um, I had never heard of this particular group of women during the war, um, but I'm really happy to learn about them. I will say that the prologue is really long. It took me about an hour to get through the introduction. And that was reading at, I think, 1.25 speed. It might have been 1.5. Um, so the intro is really long, but it's very interesting and I'm looking forward to getting more into it. So that is your book update for right now. Um, oh, and I finished Siege and Storm, finally. Um, that was really good. Second book in a series, so I'm not going to give away any spoilers or anything, even though it's been out for a few years and there's a whole TV show and everything. Um, I did really enjoy that. I am looking forward to the third book in the series, Rise and Ruin. 
but I want to get through my library books first before I go back to that. Um, so I still have two more physical books over here that I haven't started yet, just because the butchering art is taking me so long to get through because the squick, this, the squick is real. <laughs> Okay, I am going to go get started on some of my, like, actual daily task stuff, and we'll check in later. Um, it is now 12.30. I am sitting down with some lunch. Uh, I went and met with Jo earlier, and she gave me this cute little project bag that she made in addition to the cat food. Um, I also gave her a pair of stitch, or not a pair, a set of stitch markers as a thank you. Um, so we are trying to find a wet food that Quid will eat. He suddenly decided a couple months ago that he no longer likes the wet food we've been giving them for years. Um, I'm not sure if something changed in the manufacturing or what, he just has stopped eating it. And because he is FIV positive and because he is a cat, we want to make sure that he is getting as much hydration in his diet as possible to prevent future kidney problems. So she gave us a couple of flavors that she had left over from a cat who passed away. And so we're trying out with him. He has said that sardine flavored is a no. I honestly don't blame him. I'm not a big fan of sardine. <laughs> so. Nonetheless, he says thank you. And he's also a little annoyed because I decided that if you feed the noodle, you should get to pet the noodle. He says that if it involves the car, then this is a terrible idea. So once I got back, I took care of a couple of messages in my shop, and then I um, went through my query letter spreadsheet. I need three agents. One of them is not open to queries. One of them has passed away since I added her to my list, and the third one I was able to submit to. So I got one more query letter out, and now... I'm going to shift my focus to working on Gothic Ladies. And I think what I want to do, I currently have it in Scrivener. And I think to make things easier on myself, I'm going to print it, even though this is a massive, massive document. Um, I think that's going to be the easiest. And I might have to go arts and crafts on this, like I did with my very first novel, which is printing all of the scenes individually and then cutting and pasting them to put them in order with like scissors and glue sticks <laughs> which is how I edited the first draft of the spider's web. I do not recommend this <laughs> but sometimes when you have a hot mess manuscript that's the way you have to go. So I'm gonna go refill the printer and we'll get started. So I just printed out a 300 page behemoth of a manuscript and then I realized that I had something else that needed editing more urgently. So anyway, um, if you have either purchased one of the Evie Capelli books through Amazon the ebooks specifically, or if you have been following my Ko-Fi account, my shop, then you'll know that I have been in the process of updating my book files. Um, when I started the Ko-Fi shop, I decided that I wanted to do just like one more pass. I do this every couple of years with my books, just because I've grown as a writer and I'm self-published, so I can do this. So. I went through and was just making small changes, nothing major, but I still need to do Moreau House, which is the third book. 
And then once that one has been revised, I can do the Omnibus edition, which I've already started um, uploading the Omnibus to Ingram Spark. That was one of the things that I did over the last couple of days was uploading documents and stuff to Ingram. And I need to finish Moreau House. Um, now, if you are looking for the updated versions, check Kofi first. Um, I'm having an issue with the paperbacks. They're the same covers that I've been using since 2016. Amazon is saying that they don't meet their requirements now. So I'm having to go through and redo all of my covers, which for someone who is not a graphic designer and is only able to work with free software right now, this is a challenge. So I'm doing my best with it. Um, mostly it just involves resizing them section by section, which is not the most fun, especially because there have been a couple of computer crashes since 2016 and we no longer have the original files. So I'm taking the files that I have and trying to work with them. So anyway, um, I'm working on doing that right now, but I want to get Moreau House done and finish that series before I move on to something new. So I can finish this in probably two weeks tops. And mostly I'm just updating things. Some of the language in here is a little bit dated just because the original versions of this were written between 2007 and 2017. I've grown a lot as a person and an author since then, so I need to make adjustments. And I'm also updating a little bit on the technology just to make it a little bit more relatable since these are YA novels. So I'm going to go back to editing now. I've already done two chapters and then once I've finished chapter three, I will deal with this behemoth, this mess right here. Meanwhile, my editors are right here supervising as usual. They don't have a care of the world. Good morning. It is Friday. Um, I have already edited two chapters on Row House, so I'm getting ready to start chapter eight. Um, so it, this book is almost done. Thankfully, it's a very quick read. I think it's the shortest book in the Evie Capelli series. 
Um, and the way I think about the Evie Capelli series is it's more of a duology with an epilogue than it is a trilogy. And I had originally intended this to be a much longer series. And then once I got more into it and got more experience just as a writer and plotting in general, it didn't turn out that way. Um, but I would still really love to revisit the world at some point. So I'm probably two thirds of the way through this book. I haven't had to make a lot of changes. I just have made some minor updates. Like I changed the Cliff Notes version to the Spark Notes version of something. And I added an S to a word that had a typo in it. It hasn't been anything major. This is much cleaner than I was afraid it was. So I'm hoping that this afternoon I can finish this read through have the whole document finished and then I'll be able to put it up on um, my Kofi shop as well as on Ingram um, and then I'll also probably update the Amazon file um, just because I have the main reason I've been going through and editing all of my uh, backlist is so I can update the front and back matter with like contact info and links and all of that good stuff and like you know if I'm doing that it's probably a good idea to go through and give the manuscript a read through too just because I'm a one-woman show it doesn't matter how many times I self-edit I'm going to find mistakes later on that's just kind of the nature of the beast and especially later in the books. I know that's when I start to check out a little bit as an editor. So I'm making sure to go through everything. Um, if I am able to get this up today, today is the 26th, then that means it should be available by August 1st at the latest. So I want to get these up, especially on Ko-Fi. Um, but once I get through this book, then I can update the, um, the book file for the Omnibus edition, which I've already started the upload process for Ingram, and I really need to finish it, but I haven't gotten there yet. So that is the plan for today. I also have a workshop that I'm signed up for this afternoon that is through our unemployment office because it's been five months and I still barely even been able to get an interview. So, um, anyway, it would really help me out if you could like subscribe, interact with this video in any way, or check out my Ko-Fi links. And if you don't want to spend any money, I totally get that. Liking this video, sharing it, anything that interacts with anything that I post helps me get more visibility in the algorithm and that is really really helpful to me right now. I, I really cannot describe how much I need visibility at this point. So that is our current check-in. Um, oh I also scheduled some social media posts this morning. I'm trying out a new social media scheduler just because I'm not really on Twitter anymore. Um, I miss it. A lot of the people that I love are still on there and I miss seeing their content, but I just couldn't take it anymore. So I'm currently using a program called Fedica, F-E-D-I-C-A.com. And it lets you schedule for, um, X, Blue Sky, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, Mastodon, Pinterest, Pixelfied, which I'd never heard of, TikTok, Threads, and YouTube. Um, unfortunately, in order to post to Threads and Instagram, you have to connect your accounts to a Facebook, and I am not connected to a Facebook account. I don't use Facebook have like a super secret Facebook account in which I don't use my real name, but I don't want that connected to my regular social media just because I have family on Facebook and I really don't want the two to mix. I also just hate Facebook as a platform. That's my own personal thing. So I'm, 
I don't do a whole lot with Pinterest. I do have an account there as Sophia Beaumont. If you look, want to look for me there, that's one of my pen names. Um, but I never know what to post on Pinterest. Like I, I use Pinterest sometimes, but I'm just not sure what to add to it. I did create boards for all of my books. Um, and I'll go ahead and link to that in the notes down below if you want to see those. But um, I'm just not sure how to use Pinterest. It, it's just never really been a thing for me. I mostly use it as like a, like a bulletin board to pin images of stuff that I want to remember or reference later. And then I usually forget to go back and reference them. So <laughs> I'm not great at social media. You may have gathered that by now, but I am not great at social media. <laughs> Actually, anything that has the word social in it, assume that I'm bad at it. That, that that's basically it because I am a panda. I am a socially awkward panda. Anyway, um, I am going to get back to work on this. I want to see if I can finish editing this book. I want to see if I can finish editing this book before I take my lunch break. Um, that way I can just spend this afternoon doing the admin side of things and uploading. So I'm going to go get back to work. Morning. It is now Saturday. Um, I got up to chapter 10 on my edits yesterday. I'm getting ready to start working on chapter 10 now. Um, it's actually already after 10 o'clock. Um, I spent this morning working on some video scripting and stuff. Um, now I'm getting into the edits. I'm going to spend about two hours on this before I take my lunch break. And then my mom and I are going to go out and run some errands. Um, and that is probably going to take all afternoon. I really hope it doesn't, um, but it probably is. I need to pick up some groceries and stuff too. She needs to pick up groceries and I also need to drop off an order at the post office. Thank you, Claire, for your order from my shop. Um, so going through doing all of that. And then depending on how long this afternoon takes and how much energy I have left, we will see what I get done once we get back. But now it is on to editing and I'm going to work on what I'm calling my mango tiki blouse or mango tiki top while I'm editing because I like to edit and knit at the same time.
one? Okay. Quickest of check-ins. I finished editing Row House. It really was pretty clean. I just had to like clarify a couple of sentences here and there, and I found like one sentence that was missing a comma and then another one that had a misspelling in it. But other than that, it was very clean. Um, I also did the formatting for both the ebook and the print version so I can get those uploaded to Ingram this afternoon. And then once those are updated on Amazon, then I can update the Omnibus edition and I can get the entire Evie Capelli series up on Kofi. So that is going to be my project this afternoon when I get home. But right now, I'm getting ready to take my mom out to run some errands. She does not drive, so I'm the primary driver for her. She just lives a couple doors down from me. And we're going to go do some stuff outside the house. So I will check back in later. Um, and then we will wrap up this vlog then. Okay, so it is now a little after six and we have made so much progress the last two days. Um, I uploaded the first book in Evie's series to Ingram Spark. It's got both paperback and ebook available. Um, I have the files for the ebook of The Ferryman, which is book two, but I discovered a major problem. And that is I no longer have the image file for the full cover for the paperback of the Ferryman. This is a digital file. It's from 2016 or 2017 at the latest. And there's been a couple of computer crashes in this household since then. So I no longer have it. Ash, who did the cover, she no longer has it. I have, um, the digital ebook covers, but I don't have that wraparound spine or the back. So I'm going to go through my external drive and see if I can find it there. It may or may not be there. Um, in a last ditch effort, I might try plugging in my old laptop to see if it's on there, but I'm not sure. <laughs> um, Hopefully tomorrow I'll be able to find it, but I also have the files for Moro House ready that when I do have all my cover files, I just need to do some, not formatting exactly, but like changing the file formats in order to make it compatible for Ingram. That's the last thing I need to do for that. And then um, even if I can't get the ferryman up in time for the big shop update, uh, at the end of the month, I will at least have the bind off edition. So you'll be able to either purchase the first book in the series or the complete series as a single volume, um, which you're already going to know that because this isn't going to go up until the end of August. So it'll already be a month that that is up. And hopefully by then I'll have the cover situation sorted. No promises. So that's where we are on that. Um, tomorrow, I'm going to work some more on the Ingram Spark stuff and the file formatting type stuff. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and wrap up this vlog here and then we will pick up again once I start doing editing on the Gothic Ladies Literary Society. I did my production schedule for 2024 already. That, that's one thing that I did this morning. So I know what my next projects I'm going to work on are and when I hope for them to come out. Um, I'll also be updating that information into, into the Kofi shop for the custom character creation um, item that's for sale. If I haven't already, I can't even remember at this point what I've done and what I haven't done. Um, but that is an option where you fill out a Google form and pay $30 and I will write you or a character of your creation into one of my upcoming projects. And once it's complete, you will get 
an ebook copy for free and then you'll also get a discount on any paperbacks that are ordered through me if a paperback is available. So I've got three short stories and two novels on the list plus the current wrap-up for the first Sunflower Hollow book that I'm querying um, and that's where we're at right now. So I'm going to go ahead and sign off on this and we're going to go back to work tomorrow. So I'm going to sign off on this vlog. I would really appreciate it if you interacted with my videos in some way. Like, comment, subscribe. Just leave me an emoji down in the comments. You can pick a pen or a book or something. Um, it really helps. Any engagement that I have on YouTube really helps with YouTube sharing my work with more people. And the closer I can get to monetizing my channel, the better it is for me. I really need a second source of passive income. Um, especially right now as I'm filming this, it's July 27th and I ran out of unemployment in two weeks. So hopefully by the time you're watching this, I have a new job, a new day job. Um, if not, fingers crossed that I haven't been evicted. Stay safe, stay healthy, and I will see you next time. Ciao!